Hello. Today we are going to investigate the idea of learning how to make different mark making techniques with a blue ballpoint pen and also understand how to build up value and detail textures to make a realistic monochromatic drawing strictly using our ballpoint pen. When I say monochromatic, mono means one and chromatic means color. So therefore we are creating an entire drawing with one monochromatic color. Okay, One color, monochromatic. Before we get started on the actual drawing portion of what we're going to create, which is going to be um, something up to you, we will most likely stay in the idea of an animal or something with fur or texture or details. I have plenty of resources and uh, visuals to showcase um, what is capable when using the ballpoint pen on the curriculum website, so we will check that out as a class. But uh, let's go ahead and first learn how to actually use the material and understand, once again, hatching, cross-hatching, stippling, scribbling, and all those different mark-making techniques to develop textures, lights, darks, values, and eventually produce form, which once again, form is three-dimensionality. So we're going to do a value scale similar to the one that you did in drawing one. Um, we are going to start with pencil. And I'm just going to, we don't have to be super precise here, but what I'm going to do is come in with my ruler. My paper is 12 inches long. I'm going to have seven boxes. So I'm going to just go down to the two right here, make a mark, and then make a mark at the nine. So that's going to give me one inch boxes all the way down, totaling seven. Now my ruler is just as long as the paper. Now I'm going to shift my ruler straight over and make a mark at, once again, nine and two. So that's going to be the top and the bottom of our boxes that we're about to create. Now, utilize your resources. If you don't have a ruler at home, try and use something of a straight edge, like a piece of paper, and like try and trace the edge of that, or maybe you have a folder that's a little bit more sturdy, and you can use that for a straight edge. Um, but all said and done, we want nine boxes, or seven boxes, three columns. So three columns, seven rows, um, which you'll eventually see here. But um, it doesn't have to be super precise with our measurements. We're more worried about our mark making techniques and understanding value as opposed to our measurements. OK, so now I'm just going to use the width of my ruler, make it simple on myself. Um, which is one and a half inches wide. I just, I know that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just draw on one side of the ruler, draw on the other side of the ruler. Okay. Shift over, add a little gap. Draw on one side of the ruler. Draw on the other side of the ruler. There's my next column. And I'm going to go about the same width, left to right with my gap. One side of the ruler for your straight edge, perfect straight edge. And now we are left with three columns, which will then turn into seven rows. Now I press lightly enough so I can erase everything that I don't need anymore. So I'll go ahead and get that done. I'm going to erase the gap. So I have some freestanding columns. Columns are vertical, rows are horizontal. All right, so now I've got one, two, three. Next, I'm going to take my ruler. You could have done this step when you were measuring the set inches high, but just for instructional purposes, I'll do it again now. I'll make a mark at one, two, three, four, five, six, and I don't need to make a mark at seven because that one's already created. Okay, now I can just go ahead and go to the other side. Once again, making a mark at every inch. If this isn't super precise because you don't have a ruler at home or you just start eyeballing it, that's okay. But 
if you want to be super precise, this is how we'll do it. Okay, now I'm going to line one inch mark up on this side that I made, and I'm going to line the one inch mark I've made on this side, and connect those. Now, now this, when I do that, I'm going to make the line here, stop, skip that gap, because I don't need to make a mark inside that, because then I would just be erasing something that I know I don't need. If you just draw a line straight through, you're just going to have to re-erase these spots. So in order to save on craftsmanship, making our artwork look nice and pretty, and save on time, I'm just skipping every time there is that gap in the column. Once again, columns are vertical. Right now we're creating rows. You can think of the periodic table in science class. And you have the columns and the rows for your elements. Okay, just a couple more to go. And then we will start the inking process. And one more. Now I don't need to make another line after this because the bottom of my column was already created and we are good to go. Okay, so now I have three columns with one inch rows, seven total. My columns are one and a half inches wide just because the width of this and I thought that was a sufficient amount of space. Now what we're going to do is hatching, cross hatching, and scribbling. So I'm going to, going to go ahead and write that now. So hatching, if we remember hatching from drawing one, that is a mark that is continually the same at the same angle and direction. Um, and we're going to do cross hatching and scribbling. Okay, so now we're going to work our way from light to dark, just like we did with our value scales in drawing one. The top of our boxes was white. We're going to add just a little bit of value just so we can understand the different kind of ideas of how we can develop value in detail texture with our pen. And we're going to work down to super dark and very aggressive in value. So for hatching, Hatching is a concept of going in all the same direction. So the difference with pen versus pencil is with pencil, we had a variety of lids. We had 6B all the way to 2H and all the in-betweens. Bs, remember, are your darker pencils and Hs are your lighter pencils. Now with our pen, though, we don't have that option to use a darker pen or a lighter pen. So we need to deal with pressure and how close we make a line to each other. So I'm just going to make a line right here. I'm pressing very lightly, and now I'm pressing harder. So you can already see how much lighter the original was versus me starting to press heavier. Okay, then the same thing goes with if you space something out, it's going to look lighter. Now in the video, you can see how light that is versus I'm applying the same pressure with my pen, but if I make marks more close to each other, once again, I didn't press harder, I didn't press softer, but I made more marks that are closer to each other, we can already start to see how that has already become darker by the use of just one material. So for hatching, we're going to come in and press lightly and space these out quite a bit. Okay, so then the next box, I'm just going to do basically the same thing, but eliminate some of those gaps. Maybe go again. We want to make sure we have a nice progression from light to dark. Hatching, once again, is all going the same direction. We want to make sure we get right up to the edge of those boxes that we created. Okay, then we can come in and start to... Uh, Get a little bit more closer, maybe start to apply a little bit more pressure. We can see how that's starting to get dark. Now I'm going to jump down to the bottom one. Whenever we do the hatching technique, you need to lift every time you make a mark. This is not hatching. 
that is scribbling, which is basically what you're going to do here, but I'm going to show you a different variation on how to do that. So here I'm making marks that are, once again, closer to each other, as well as adding a little bit more pressure, but still lifting my pen every time I make a mark. And going all the same direction. Okay, then the next box would be a little bit lighter if we're going in reverse this time. This time we're going darker, this time we're going lighter. But you need to make sure that is definitely lighter in value, so I could maybe build this up even more. Lifting my pen every time I make a mark. And then you would find the progressional middle gaps for that as well. Okay, now I'm just going to jump ahead. Now for cross hatching, we are making our lines again, but then coming in and making like X's. Okay, so that's cross hatching. So once again, pressing very light with my pen, super spaced out. I'm going to come and go the perpendicular way, exact opposite way. And that's my cross hatching. Then I'm going to come in and build up some more value, add a little bit more pressure as well as more lines. Sometimes it's nice to take a step back and look at your picture from afar so then you can see, oh, is this one actually darker? So for me, I think I need to darken this one up just a tad. But I don't want to go too dark because then I can't get dark enough to the bottom. So I can jump to the bottom maybe and then start to find the middle. So once again, for cross hatching, you're going to come in at this angle. And then go the other way. And really build that up. Once again, hatching and cross hatching, you lift your pencil ever or your pen in this case every time you make a mark. Okay, and then I could find my middle values as well, which I will finish that. So for scribbling, we are going to just kind of do a continual motion just any direction you want okay with scribbling we're not gonna lift our pen okay so I'm gonna start wherever I want to and I'm going to come in and go right up against my edges but pressing very lightly and notice how I never lift my pen okay so that's my light box for scribbling next time I'm gonna scribble more and add a little bit more pressure You can go any direction you want, however you deem necessary, but you're going to leave your pen on the paper the entire time for each individual box. Okay, so you can see how that one's lighter, that one's darker. Now this could be a good technique for um, a certain item that you might select, each one of these techniques, which once again, I'll show you examples. Um, of ink drawings but you'll notice how every technique can flow with what you're trying to create. Hatching could be good for hair, scribbling could be good for maybe texture of clothing um, or even curly hair for that matter so um, it all becomes a case-by-case -case basis and you learning these different materials will help you understand what you think is best to recreate your image. Okay, once again, for my darkest box, I'm scribbling. I haven't lifted my pen off this paper for the box I'm working on now, but I'm pressing harder and I am adding a lot more lines compared to my other boxes I've already created. Getting right up against that edge. I can always come in and make things darker, so that's the thing. If you go too dark, you can't make it lighter. But if you go too light, you can always make things darker. So you always want to make sure you're being very cautious with your lights. Because once again, you can make those lighter. But I can definitely make my darks darker. Okay, so if I wanted to darken this up because I accidentally made this box a little bit too close to this box, then I can make this one darker. Okay, 
So these are your three basic mark making techniques with um, what we're going to do for the pen drawing. Now there's a few other things that you can imply into your artwork and that would be stippling, which is the idea of making dots. Okay, so once again with stippling, the more dots you place, the darker it will become. So if I do a few dots here and there, it's going to be very light. You can barely see those dots, which is good because that's light. But then if you make more dots and press push a little bit harder and be in a more controlled environment with where you want your dots, then you can make that darker. So that is called stippling, okay? which we'll learn about more next class. Then another thing that you can really think about is how your lines interact with your objects. So if you're working on something that's round, which I've discussed this in drawing one as well for my drawing one students, but if you work in the contour shape of the object, that helps round it out if you're trying to think for that. So the direction of your mark. So I wouldn't do hatching for this. I would probably do a curved hatching. Okay, and then that will help imply the roundness of the object then I can start to hatch more where it's going to be dark. If I want to include them cross-hatching, I can do that. But I, this is called contour, and you go in the direction of your object to help imply the object itself. This is very, very, very helpful when things are around, since we're working on a flat surface. Okay, so my line work is implying that this cylinder is round versus if I were doing a box, I would definitely I wouldn't curve the lines on this box. I would definitely go more left to right to imply that it's flat and do all that. Okay. All right. So um, that is the rundown of different mark making materials with your ink pen. Um, we will practice these techniques and then once we master these techniques, once again, which includes hatching, cross hatching, scribbling, and stippling, then taking these ideas to the next level and using contour to understand the direction of the object. So if it's round, you would shade or develop your marks in a round kind of idea, um, we will master these skills and then we will take that to the next level and do a project drawing something realistic from life, understanding the darkest dark values, the lightest lights, what different mark making techniques are best suited for what your object looks like, which everybody will have different objects. So then you'll have to use the context clues of what you learned and how that can be applied into your drawing. So go ahead and do this. Once again, we want three columns with seven rows on our paper, and then you're going to have a progressional display of light, pressing lightly and spacing out your lines to starting to press more aggressively and pushing your lines closer together to develop those darks. Okay, so I'll go ahead and finish mine, and I expect you guys to work on this today and finish it as well. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. But once again, when we finish this, we'll start to investigate what object or image we want to recreate with our ballpoint pen uh, in a monochromatic drawing. One color, monochromatic.